Let's dive right in and talk about five steps that you can use to turn your income, however you're generating that income, into wealth. Now, on the surface, this may seem a little bit obvious, but oftentimes doing the obvious things consistently is exactly what it takes to get the results that you want. And I would say that this is like one of those, one of those areas where that applies in spades. You want to turn your income into wealth, you need to follow these five simple steps. What are they? Well, uh, they're here in front of you in the notes. We'll go through each one by one. First, you need to make it. Okay, it's obvious, right? Obviously, right? <sighs> yeah, you need to make income, which is mostly what I talk about here at Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. This is maybe my last episode in a while where I'm really going to be talking about investing and wealth building. But if you're serious about if you're serious about growing your wealth, you need to start by making some income. And really, if you want to have enough income that you're able to, to accumulate and generate and sustain wealth, you need more than enough income to support your lifestyle. So this could involve side hustles. It could involve launching a business. It could be uh, negotiating your salary. It could be finding new opportunities. There's lots of different ways that you can generate more income. And if you're creative about it and you're you're willing to do different things, uh, then, you know, there, there are ways to do it. You have to start by being a little bit curious about that and pursue opportunities and develop skills that justify a higher income, skills that allow you to put more value into the world for the type of people who are able to pay you for that value. I'm not going to go any deeper into that. In this because mostly we're talking about transforming the income that you earn into wealth. So then you have to save it, right? Step two is save it. There's this great lesson from a book called The Richest Man in Babylon, and it's an old book. Uh, you can find it pretty easily now because it's out of copyright. Um, it is called The Richest Man in Babylon, and it is a series of parables about a guy in Babylon who, who uh, who, who learns how to get rich. And it teaches you all these principles of, of getting rich. And one of the core, most important, essential principles of all of it is to pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. So what does that mean? Uh, well, it says, uh, basically, for if you earn 10 pieces of gold, you should take the first piece of gold and learn to live off the other nine. You, you set aside that first piece of gold and you earn 10 pieces of gold, you earn 10 pieces of silver, you earn $10, you earn $10,000, you earn $1,000, like whatever it is, right? It's saying take 10% of what you earn and set it aside and then learn to live off the rest. And when you do this intentionally, and it doesn't have to stay at 10%, Eventually, hopefully, it's going to grow beyond 10%. It's going to be 20, 30, 40, 50%, especially if you're able to grow your income, right? But when you learn to live off a portion of what you earn, then you can save the rest. And that is the beginning. That's planting the seeds of wealth. Uh, but in order for this to work, you can't look at that savings account like six months in and be like, that's a lot of money. We could go on a vacation, right? Maybe you need to have a vacation fund that comes out of that other $9, right? You earn $10, you set aside one. Maybe you set aside another dollar for a vacation fund or for an adventure fund or for a living, living wealthy fund, right? But the, the whole point here is you can't have your lifestyle continue to grow and grow and grow to eat up all of your income. And it is important here to be diligent and consistent with your savings, even if it's a very small amount, right? Even if it's $10 and you save one, right? Even if it's uh, $1,000 a month and you figure out a way to save 100 and live off the other $900, this is the seeds of wealth that you are planting right? And yes, ideally, you're going to grow your income. So it's much easier to save much more money. But if you're not able to save when you're making a little bit, you probably won't be able to save when you're making a lot either. Because you'll have this, this uh, habit, this behavior of spending everything you earn. And you need to save a portion of your income if you want to turn it into wealth. 
Next up, step three is invest it. Make your money, make money. Now, I actually don't necessarily think that you should just throw all that savings into the investment markets right away. It's really smart to set aside a rainy day fund. And I have heard a really sad stat recently, and it's bounced around for a few years, and the numbers have changed a little bit. But it's something like the majority of the American public is not able to handle a $500 emergency expense without going into debt. The majority of the American public is not able to handle a $500 emergency expense without going into debt. Now, I understand that there's a lot of people who struggle to make ends meet. I also know that a lot of those people have iPhones and expensive monthly plans, and they just bought the newest iPhone, and they have some bad spending habits that don't reflect step two, which is don't let your lifestyle creep up to be more than your monthly expenses, and in fact, pay yourself first, be consistently setting some aside. Right? Um, there have been times where it was much harder for me to handle emergency expenses, and, and thankfully, through a combination of um, saving and through a combination of earning, both myself and my wife, uh, you know, it's a lot easier now, right? Um, so the first thing that you want to do with your savings is you want to have a little bit of flexibility that you give yourself in a rainy day fund. Um, again, this is for emergency expenses only, and ideally, you don't even touch it. Ideally, even you know emergency expenses come out of your normal income, right? But you have this available, uh, and then the excess money should go into investments that are designed to make your money make money. Um, designed to have your money grow. And there's two words that you need to remember in the context of investing is simplify and diversify. Simplify is the simpler the strategy is, the easier, like the more consistently you're going to be able to follow it, the more automatic it's going to feel to follow. If you have to like chase down, um, you know, company earnings statements and you're worried that the next quarter's earnings statement is going to tank your portfolio and all of that, that's not a very simple approach to investing. Um, my preference is just big, diversified investments across the entire market. And, um, and, and that's kind of the simplest of all. In fact, my approach to investing really relies on two investments, basically two stocks. Um, not stocks, but funds, uh, two stocks you, you are going to invest in for the rest of your life, right? And that's, that's an incredibly simple approach to investing. And then diversifying is remembering that if you have all of your investments concentrated in one investment, for example, you have them all concentrated in this, this um, big, trustworthy, reliable energy company called Enron, well, when it turns out Enron was running a massive fraud and the, and the, the stock completely tanks, uh, you're in trouble, right? And so you want to diversify across the market. It can be smart to diversify across multiple asset types eventually, maybe. So like, uh, you know, I have some real estate, uh, my home and an office suite. I have investments in the market, but my investments in the market aren't invested in individual companies. My investments in the market are, are aimed at like really, really broad investing. And so investing, it's smart to simplify and diversify, especially because most of us don't have any kind of advantage in terms of understanding investments that are going to do particularly well. So we're better off just investing in the broad market. <laughs> and then once you've invested it, don't lose it. Now, if you've done most of what I've told you so far, um, you're not at risk of like, hey, I just invested in Enron and it crashed, or I just invested in some company that was, you know, shooting for the moon and now it crashed, right? Uh, but the market's going to go up and down, right? And and there's going to be potential issues with that. And uh, Warren Buffett has these these two rules. Rule number one is don't lose money. Rule number two is never forget rule number one. Warren Buffett knows a, a couple things about investing, and if that's his rule number one and rule number two. You know, it's, it's worth asking yourself why. I will say that most investors who I know have gone through a period of time where they have gotten really excited about certain market trends or individual investments or whatever, right? They got super into GameStop or they got super into crypto or they got super into 
um, you know, whatever it was before that. And they chased an opportunity and then the market turned against them and they lost a lot of money. And there's a reason that the world's best investors say, don't lose money is rule number one, right? So um, gambling, gambling, right, is what we do in a casino. Gambling is what we do at the poker table. Gambling is what we do at a slot machine, right? Speculation is doing the exact same thing in the stock market. <laughs> it's, it's basically saying, I'm buying this on the hope that it is going to be worth more later. Um, and I, I plan to buy it when it's worth less and sell it when it's worth more. But because the future is so uncertain, even for an individual company, even for a company that looks great from the outside, that type of speculation in an attempt to beat the market usually ends up, and the statistics completely back, back me up on this, usually ends up going against you. Uh, it usually ends up hurting you in the long run whether you're an individual investor or a pro or an individual who's just investing in pros, right? Speculation, speculation, trying to beat the market pretty much always ends up bad. Now, investing is basically saying, I'm buying this without the intent to sell it. And um, obviously I hope that it's going to continue going up and I hope to continue to get paid as an owner of this. And, um, and I don't really have a sell strategy in mind because I'm just buying and holding it. And as much as we all want to believe that we can beat the market, uh, this long-term investing approach as opposed to speculation tends to do the best for most investors over their investing lifetime. And um, in the context of all of this, your biggest risk is not the market. Your biggest risk is your emotional response to whatever your individual investments do. So if you invest in the whole market and the market has a crash, if you sell at the bottom, that's your risk, right? That's where you lose money. Um, if you chase new highs in the market by trying to buy lots of shares and then that goes down, your risk was your emotional response to the market, right? And so these things are absolutely essential because you know, we started off talking about you got to make a little money, right? But as you're accumulating that money, if you get too aggressive with trying to make your money make money instead of just continuing to put money in there and, and uh, thinking of it as like a very long term, hey, I'm owning shares in these companies, but I'm an owner and the company is going to continue to pay me, right? That's what investing is. Or you're investing in every company in the market if you're investing in a big, broad fund, right? Um, if you approach it from that perspective, like my goal is not to sell, my goal is to just, just sit here and just let my money do its work, then that's going to tend to perform best in the long run, according to all sorts of research on what happens for individual investors and professionals. And then step five is to grow it. Um, and I say grow it like, um, <laughs> Well, first thing, uh, keep saving and investing, right? Just keep putting money into your, into your portfolio. Keep putting money into your investments. Um, as you just continue to accumulate, that's when it starts to get really exciting because all the numbers start to look a lot bigger. Uh, remember, remember, remember for this growing thing, like it's not a short term, it's not a short term win necessarily. You're not trying to like, chase, oh, I'm going to be a whole bunch richer in the next 12 months. You're saying, I'm planting seeds that are going to grow through time and over the long term, continuing to plant seeds and continuing to, to feed and water this, right? Um, that's going to be what is going to lead to the most success. And uh, if you are into gardening at all or growing plants, uh, there's this idea of overtending your garden. So if you plant seeds, yeah, it's important to water them and make sure that they have appropriate nutrients, but you can't make a plant grow faster than it's gonna grow with appropriate nutrients and water and sunlight and all that stuff, right? You can only let a plant grow as fast as it grows. And largely your portfolio, at least the uh, the returns from your portfolio, the appreciation of your portfolio is the same way, right? You can accumulate more, you can plant more seeds, and you can let more seeds grow, right? But over tending your garden, which is trading and trying to beat the market and all of that, 
tends to actually lead to underperformance. And, you know, I, I beat that up because so consistently, that's absolutely what's true. If you want to grow your wealth, you just have to let it grow and keep contributing, keep accumulating savings, keep accumulating that income and turning it into even more wealth. My call to action for you at the end of this episode is ask yourself how you can use this. What steps could you uh, maybe do a little bit better going forward, right? Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe so you get more content like this. And on a daily basis, usually what I post about is actually how to generate more income through marketing, copywriting, business building, all that good stuff. And if you'd like to learn more about my approach to wealth building and investing, check out the link in the description to Matic Wealth. It's my project to help you grow your wealth automatically. I'm Roy Furr. This is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Like I said, this will probably be my last episode in a little bit on uh, investing and growing your wealth. I hope you found these incredibly valuable. Check out Magic Wealth if you would like more on that. And tomorrow we'll get back to uh, we'll get back to more marketing. And I'll see you again in that episode. See you soon. Bye. Thank you once again for tuning in to this daily episode of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Remember, check out the links with this episode for even more value. Now make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and engage in every way you can to keep this show going and growing and delivering daily value to you. I'll catch you soon for your next big breakthrough.